delusional step, Mill claims OP's daughter is her own and threatens to end herself after OP went to NC. Now everyone says OP is evil. Acronym definitions. As Mill. Stepmother-in-law. Mill. Mother-in-law. Phil. Father-in-law. DH. Dear husband. DD. Dear daughter. DS. Dear son. Strap in. This one is long. Advice needed. Sorry. This is a little long. My S. Mill is generally a lovely woman. She's kind, helpful and sweet. But Lord, recently, I wanted to strangle her. Background. Phil married Smill when D.H. was a teenager, so they've been together for quite a while now. She has had infertility issues in the past, and after countless failed IVF tries, she found out they couldn't have children. I think one of the benefits of marrying Phil was that she would inherit two sons. Even if they were close to being legal adults, I guess she knew one day they would have children and she'd be a grandmother. Now this brings me to my issue. Before I gave birth to Dee Dee, I knew an influx of annoying SHD was coming my way because there hadn't been a girl born into the family for a long time. But I definitely didn't think it would be this bad. When I was pregnant with Dee Dee, my S. Mill bought me four bin bags worth of clothes. Despite my specific request for no one to buy me clothes because A. She will grow out of them in a matter of weeks, so it's a waste of money, and B. My in-laws have a tendency to buy clothes that say SHT like grandmas know. One girl, daddy's girl, etc. When I told my S. Mill that I learned from my mistake last time around, and that I wouldn't even have people wait in the delivery room, because of the SHT storm that was the birth of my first child a whole other story of my S. Mill versus Mill and who can outcry each other. She knows I have clear boundaries, and has seen the repercussions when people overstep them with my Mill. So instead of complaining to me, she said, oh okay I understand. But I was told by Phil later on that she cried herself to sleep every night for a week. I have a good relationship with my S. Mill. So this did hurt me to hear. But at the same time, it felt like a guilt trip. I sat her down and told her this wasn't about her, and of course she'd be involved in my daughter's life. Just hold off for a bit. She seemed to understand, but she clearly didn't because the past year has been difficult, to say the least. This leads me up today. I'll bullet point it to make it more organized. She constantly refers to my daughter as variations of her precious little girl, a common trend that my in-laws all have. To be honest, my mother pointed out how weird it was. I walked in on her hovering over Dee Dee in her crib, saying, you're the child I have prayed for, my little girl. God has truly answered my prayers. I tried to give my daughter a middle name because I got to give Dee Dee her first name. Um, that's not how it works. The name she chose was what she picked for the child that she miscarried. So I was very creeped out. Probably one of the weirdest things is when she said, she's so beautiful. She got that from you. It's a shame. I always wanted to see my features on my child. Maybe we can say she has my eyes. I actually just looked at her, like, WTF. When my daughter cries, this woman turns into Usain Bolt himself and goes to pick her up, saying SHH, I'm here now, you're okay, nothing can hurt you. What was going to hurt her is Mildeef, other people's the guilt trips. Now I'm very reluctant to let my children sleep over at other people's houses because they're still very young. But despite this, she still constantly asks, Can I have Dee Dee over for the night? Gives reason. What about next week? Gives reason nursery. Now she makes statements i.e. I've set up the whole nursery, and she hasn't even used it once. Creepily stares at me. I need some advice. I don't know how to handle this. Sometimes I'd rather she just be like my mill, just an upfront arsehole, because I can deal with that. I just don't know how to deal with passive aggressiveness. Technically, she doesn't overstep my boundaries, but she'll find loopholes or guilt trips. I get it. You didn't get to have children. Honestly, I feel for you. But that doesn't mean my daughter is going to be the baby you've always wanted to have. However, she has been there for me, and is honestly a sweet person overall. But ever since I've had my daughter, she has become overbearing. DH loves his dad and my S. Mill, and his dad can't bear his wife being upset. So I know if DH and I try to talk to her formally about it, I've told her on small occasions directly, she'll cry and guilt trip, maybe not even intentionally. I don't know how to handle weepy people. Any advice? Update one. This post was getting really long, so I'm writing a separate post to finish the update. Yeah, SHD went down, so I was going to wait until Friday when S. Mill, Phil, Bill, his wife and kids come over. My naive self thought this was a take her to the side for a five-minute chat situation. But you guys scared the F out of me more like the sense in me with your comments, so I had to get my ducks in a row immediately. Now I have to say the stories of this sub. Some of which you've brought to my attention also so to the person who linked the trailer to the hand that rocks the cradle. The singular most terrifying movie clip I've seen as a mother is so out of my spectrum. And everything I know, 
It was hard to adjust to, let alone come to the realization that this could be my situation. Okay, I'll give you a rundown of last night's events. As soon as I saw my dad in the evening, I burst out crying. He just looked at me shocked, because I rarely cry. So even if he didn't think the S-Mill situation was bad before, he knew it must be to be making me feel this way. I began by telling him everything. He would notice, and I would occasionally tell him that when I was on the brink of ripping my hair out, the SHTS mill would do, but never in full detail mainly because when I see my DH, I want to have a real conversation with him. It was like word vomit. I told him about the pet names, the constant holding, the running to get her before me, the clothes, all the SHT through my pregnancy, the nursery, the constant whispering in DD's ear of God knows what, and the photo album of DD. She takes pictures continuously and has already filled out a massive photo album. She has more photos than me. The sad statements, the looks. F, I forgot to mention the lols in my first post. When I'm holding my daughter, she just gives me the weirdest look. It's like a combination of sadness, creepiness, anger, and confusion. I finished by reading a few of your comments. I highlighted what a lot of you guys said. That S. Mill didn't properly address or handle her grief. And it has manifested into an obsession with my daughter. Her unhealthy attachment to DD is not only damaging to my DD and DS, who will grow up noticing the different attention they get from her everyone else treats them the same, but also to her own mental health. I made it clear that I do genuinely have love for Esmil, but I'm scared of this unhealthy attachment, and it's more serious than we both previously thought. I need both of us to talk to Esmil and Phil, because I'm scared about how this could end. He just sat there and listened to everything I said and read. The first thing he did was hug me, and for someone who doesn't cry lord, I think I cried for England in that moment. He began by saying he always knew she hadn't processed her grief properly, and he told me a few instances when he was a teenager. He said first things first. My dad has to realize that his wife is his primary concern, and she needs help. And DH's primary concern is me and the kids, and his dad needs to respect that. He said we should talk to them together, because his dad will most likely try to shut it down if he just speaks to his dad separately. We had a whole plan to start off from a point of concern, rather than slowly branching into our issues outlining our rules and boundaries clearly and firmly so that we're not to be overridden, manipulated, influenced, or stomped over. Any breach of our boundaries would indicate that S. Mill doesn't respect our role as DDDS parents and as individuals, and with all violations, there are repercussions. Then coming back to concern addressing her mental health and her processing her grief best friend, who is like a sister to me and is in the loop because we're very close, went through her own miscarriage a few years ago and went to therapy and gave me the contact information of her therapist, we would be there for her emotionally as well. I made it clear to my DH that even if she agrees to respect our boundaries and acknowledges all the indirect ways she doesn't abide by them, I still want her to go to therapy because those issues won't go away. And if she can't inflict them on DD, she will only internalize them, which in turn causes herself more inner conflict. And I am genuinely concerned about her mental health. DH agreed and said we'd outline that as a necessity. We had notes, we were on the same page, the kids were sleeping, and I had calmed down. Great. I got a text from Mill saying she and Phil should come round tomorrow today for dinner instead, because Friday they have a meeting for some event thing at their church. Great. My anxiety-ridden mind can face this quicker and won't have to be drawn out until the end of the week. Everything was set. I had DH's full support, and he'd be addressing everything with me. My S. Mill is a rational woman. What could go wrong? The SHT storm that was today shouts back everything. Update 2. I just want to start off by saying this happened a few hours ago, so I'm still pretty overwhelmed. I know you guys are used to the craziness of Mills, but this level is still very much new to me, so I'm still in a bit of shock. So please forgive me for any mistakes, errors, etc. As I was getting ready in the morning, my hands were a little shaky, and it felt like someone had left a knife in my stomach. I think this was my body warning me something was going to go down. The whole day at work dragged on, but let's get to the point. This mill and Phil live a 30-minute drive away, and they're always on time. I picked up the kids from the childminder, settled them down, and DH came home. I started to prep dinner. Everything was set. We were planning to have the talk after dinner when the kids went down, just to make life easier. The door rings, DH gets it, and they come in to greet everyone. This mill spots DD in my arms, makes a beeline towards me, and puts her arms out. My Darig, you're getting so big. Come to Nana. I just looked at her and said, actually, can you help me in the kitchen? And handed my kid to DH. She looked a little taken back, but she still came along and helped me out. It was dinner time, we're eating. And she spends the dinner fussing and cooing and generally devoting her time to DD, 
who is just making a mess. Me's mill. Your food is getting cold. Is mill. It's fine. Baby voice. My princess is being a little fussy. She needs some attention, don't you? Me. She could care less about you right now. She's enjoying her food, and you should too. Was mill. Nonsense. She starts eating her food anyway. Shortly after, kids get put to bed despite protests from Smill. I come down to her talking to DH and Phil, saying, Panther seems very short today. Is she okay? I walk up and answer before DH actually sir, we've been meaning to speak to you. All the color on her face disappeared. It was the creepiest SHT. I was a bit taken back, but I continued. I sat next to DH, so we were across from S. Mill and Phil. Me. I hope you don't take this as an attack, as we're greatly concerned about this situation. Since DD has come along, we've noticed you have changed from a warm and loving grandmother to DS, adopting a direct mother role with DD. We want to make it clear so there's no confusion. We're DD parents, and that was Mill. Weeping commences right on cue. Me hands over tissue, I'll continue. We have a clear set of boundaries that you have continually crossed, most likely unintentionally, but nevertheless, so we want to redefine them so there is no further confusion. I am Didi's mother. And when she cries and I am two feet away from her, I don't appreciate you rushing past me to pick her up. Sometimes, let her cry it out if you don't go to pick her up. Didi isn't yours. Weeping louder, Phil looks annoyed. I continue. Please stop referring to her as your little girl, your princess, or anything relating to that. You're her grandmother, a wonderful one. But please understand your role, the constant photographs. You can enjoy a moment with DD without having to snap a photograph. Just appreciate the moment. Please stop harassing me for FaceTime sessions when you've just seen her. S. Mill is getting visibly upset. DH is Mill, I can see you getting upset, Dad. I know this is an issue for you, but you have to realize our primary concern is our children, and we are worried about Smill. She has developed an unhealthy attachment to DD, and she needs to address the underlying issue her grief. We know this is hard for you. But until you do, we don't feel comfortable with you being alone with Dee Dee. This is what did it. She was weepy before, and Phil was annoyed. But holy SHT, this led to the explosion. She jumped up and shouted, You can't take her away from me. She's all I have. I love that little girl, and I would never do anything that would cause her harm. Why are you trying to keep me away from her? Panther, I have done so much for you. I was the mill that DH's biological mother mill wasn't. And this is how you chose to repay me. By taking away my little girl, I don't have issues, I couldn't have children, and God himself blessed me with a family of my own. And now you're trying to take her from me. She runs out of the room, shouting Dee Dee's name. We all just sat there stunned. Never in my life did I think she was even capable of screeching that loud. And I don't think Phil was either. I shot up, followed her, and ran past her, blocking her entry to the stairs. I was shouting for DH. She was weeping. The Lord knows why it was taking them so long. I just pushed this mill back and said, you need to leave. Get the F out of my house. You're going to wake up my kids with your wailing. My voice was so firm and oddly unfazed, even though I was in complete shock. She looked at me and collapsed, grabbing onto my feet, begging and still wailing. It was hard to understand her. DH and Phil appeared and were just as shocked as I felt, but they had it written on their faces. DH walks over to us, unclaws her hands from my feet, and lifts up her limp body. She grabs DH by the face and weeps. Please. I'll do whatever you want. I'll listen to your rules. Please don't take her away from me. She's my little girl. DH looked at Phil and said, she needs help. More than any of us can give her. Phil finally snaps out of his trance and takes his mill's hand. He is trying to calm her down and put her jacket on. She's still weeping as they're opening the door. Please, 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 Panther, please. Is the last thing I hear before they get in the car and drive off. I run up to check on the kids. They're both fast asleep. I walk back downstairs and just sit on the stairs. Then DH walks over and sits down next to me, holds my hand, and we sit there in silence for the next five minutes, mentally processing what happened. I called the childminder to let her know that she can't release the kids to anyone but me or DH, because, in the past, Phil and Zmil have picked up the kids for me, so she's familiar with them. We already have a security system, cameras and passcodes that only me and DH know. I also emailed my boss, who happens to be my friend to let her know I wouldn't be in tomorrow. I doubt I'm going to get much sleep tonight. I'm pretty lost and stunned after all of this. Update 3. A lot has happened. I wanted to write it up while it was still fresh, but it kept tumbling into a massive SHT storm, so I've skipped out on details. You have all been so supportive, provided me with great advice, and checked up on me, 
so I want to thank you all. We apologize for any errors in advance, the SHT show. Everything was quiet for a few days. We hadn't heard from S. Mill or Phil directly, but Bill said his dad Phil was taking care of the situation, which I assumed meant Phil was taking her to see a professional. DH texted his dad that we were glad he was taking the much-needed steps to get S. Mill professional attention, and there was no shame in that. We are concerned for her well-being, but due to recent events, we'll be limiting our contact, and there is to be no contact with the children until we see great improvement, though visits will still be supervised. We hope she's getting the help she needs, and we wish them luck. He replied, I understand and thank you cool. I took time off work because I was a little anxious, and we were in the process of hiring a nanny not new, already pre-planned, but apart from the whirlwind that was the breakdown, I thought the situation was contained. This is where the narrator in my life says she thought wrong. I didn't want to leave the house for Mother's Day, but DH planned a whole day, so we agreed we'd celebrate it. I don't know why, but I felt a little guilty. In the back of my mind, I couldn't help but think of his mill, whom we celebrate every year, and she was probably a mess, so the morning of, I laid out my makeup and went to have a shower. I come back, and several products are gone. I assumed it was stress, and that I must have forgotten to put it out or misplaced it. So after looking for a while and not finding them, I just used different products in my spare brushes. It was odd, but not unlike me to misplace things, so whatever. We leave. DH, the kids, and I are all having brunch at a restaurant 15 minutes from our house. It was fairly packed. It was a little chillier than I expected. So I thought I'd grab a jacket for my kids. And by the time I got back, the food would have arrived. So off I go. Now, when I pulled up, I noticed the door, the side door, where the recycling bin, outdoor bin, etc. are. But there's a window opening above that, which is important was slightly open. It's not a door that has a lock, so I assumed the wind must have opened it slightly. But it's still a little odd. I went to close the door, and I noticed a trash can had fallen over. Now this was odd. The wind couldn't have knocked this over. It was full. Now I was a little on edge, but I remained calm but cautious. I went to the front of the house slowly unlocked the door with my keys, and closed the door behind me. My heart was racing. I was sure I was overreacting, but I had a terrible feeling. I walked up the stairs, walked past my son's room F the jacket, and walked up to my daughter's room, and the sight I saw horrified me. My daughter's clothes were organized in rows on the floor. Not folded but laid out. Outfits are completed with shoes and accessories. There, sitting cross-legged on the floor, was his mill. All I could say was, what the F? This lady got up so fast and sighed like she had been waiting on me. Thank God you're here, Panther. I came to celebrate Mother's Day with the babies. No one was here. I couldn't decide on what outfit to put her in, so I laid them out to get a visual. I literally thought I was the one going crazy. I took out my phone to call DH, and she grabbed my phone and said, No, no, we don't have to do that, with the effing creepiest grin. Now I was split. My heart was saying, F this SHT, start swinging. But my head was saying, She's unwell. Vulnerable and clearly unstable. Mies Mill, you need to leave right now. You're not supposed to be here. We are in NC, Liz Mill. But it's Mother's Day. It's the day God meant for mothers and children. I should be with my baby. Me, I was done. She is not your daughter. I am her mother, and she is my daughter. You're not even biologically related to her. I'm done with this SHT. She snatches the phone back. I started to walk down the stairs to call DH from downstairs and this woman was sobbing behind me. I was so done that a bee had run out of patience. I called DH and tell him. He wanted to drive back, but I didn't want him to bring back the kids, so I said to drop them off at Sill House, and then come. This woman was screaming over my shoulder Panther. Is that DH? Is he bringing DD? OMG, I knew you'd come around. See, this was a misunderstanding. Babies are supposed to be with their mothers. Starts laughing. Me, you're delusional. I can never let you be around them. You broke into my house. Who does that? I'm calling the police. Is Mill. Sobs you can't. We're family. I'm not doing anything wrong. You're trying to keep her from me. Half of me wanted to beat the sense into her. But the other half was so freaked out that I thought it would be better for the police to handle this SHT. The phone was ringing. And as I said hello and turned back around, this woman had two kitchen knives, each one pointing at her temple. I never felt more powerless and horrified. She was sobbing that she couldn't live in this world without her baby. I try to speak calmly and slowly, not to scare her, but F, I'm about to faint from horror. She's screaming and sobbing uncontrollably, saying she can't live in this world anymore. It's too painful and too evil. 
I'm crying now, half because I'm terrified and the other half, because what she is saying is horrible. I'm begging and pleading with her. But I know the only thing that'll get her to put down the knives is my daughter. I tell her she can't do this. How will it affect Dee Dee? Without her grandmother here. She needs you. She starts to whimper and drops the knives. I pick them up. The police arrived. The rest of the day was a bit of a blur. I remember D.H., Phil, and Bill arriving shortly. I remember screaming at Phil that he was weak and cowardly, and that he needed to put her in a hospital where she needed to be psychologically analyzed. I felt bad at how I was just screaming at him. But that was one of the most terrifying moments I've witnessed. Miss Mill went into psychiatric hold, and she's still in the hospital right now. Neither myself nor D.H. have visited her, but Sill told me that the first day she was screaming, just let me die and crying for D.D. It's been a week, but I was told she's made improvements. I don't know how to feel. On one hand, I feel our relationship is permanently damaged. I feel guilty because I know she's unwell, but a part of me will always feel she's unpredictable and therefore unsafe to be around. I'm British if you couldn't tell by my phrases and spellings, but I live in the U.S. I met D.H. in college, got married and stayed so I don't have any of my own family to lean on here. But we have an apartment in another state where my best friend happens to live a 10-minute drive away, so me and the kids are going to go for a few weeks. We're also looking to move. This whole thing has been a trial, to say the least. Hopefully, this is the end of the madness. Update 4. Hey guys. I'll give you a rundown of what's been going on. Is Mill a name is overdue? Any suggestions? Is out of the hospital? From what I've heard from Syl, her delusions have stopped. But she's very depressed about the reality of her life and what's happened. She's now attending therapy. The restraining order was granted. We spoke to our lawyers, and the breaking and entering charges were a lot trickier than we thought. And honestly, we think she needs mental help more than criminal correction. So we decided against it. We have a complete new security system that covers the whole grounds. New locks, new passwords. This all changed during the day. The house was put up for sale. I'm sad about this because it's my dream house, but too much has happened to ruin it for us. Plus, as Mill and Phil live a 20-minute drive away. Way too close. Me and the kids are temporarily staying in our apartment in another state. Smill has never been here, nor does she know the address. My friends have been really supportive, and my sister has flown over. She's been great. Still, I gave a picture to the doorman of what she looked like, just in case. We finalized our will. We had already been doing this to ensure Phil and Smill would never be the guardians of our children. I just wanted to clear up some things from my last post. I don't feel sorry for her, as in oh I'll forgive her, poor her. She's not a threat. I'm sorry more that this is an unfortunate situation, and it's a shame it had to end in NC. Don't get me wrong, I felt sad initially, but not enough to place her needs above mine or those of my children. If I'm being completely honest, even with the RO, I think she will still come for us. I doubt she cares about legal repercussions. Syl said it took some time, but she didn't seem delusional anymore, just depressed. And she cries all day that she won't see us for a long time because of what she did. I can't take the risk of her being around my children, knowing what she is capable of, but they will no doubt try to guilt us into seeing them. Especially with the birthdays coming up. Yeah, hell will freeze over before that happens. Phil promised us Mill that when she gets better, of course she'll get to see us. Bill stepped in and said that's not his decision, and we've made it clear that S. Mill won't be around our children for a long time. She cried. The flying monkeys have hit us with full force. People from S. Mill's church called D.H. They were rambling on about how this situation is terrible, and we should not abandon her in her time of need, etc. He hung up. The pastor of the church met with D.H., and he was lovely. He said we were taking the right steps to ensure the safety of our children. We have vacation plans already booked so we'll be out of the country for a few months. Unfortunately, we can't move out of the U.S. permanently. It isn't the right time for us. But we're definitely moving states. A fresh start is overdue. To top it off, my mill has returned from her travels in Timbuktu, harassing D.H. for details, and sweeping in trying to adopt the stable parental law and grandparent roles double law. Great. Also, I never found the missing makeup. I had to repurchase the products, which stinks because they're expensive as f. Relevant comments. Who little tan me too. I'm so sorry for you all. Such a shtty situation. I think you're doing the right thing though. And as for a name Niobe in Greek mythology, is the woman who wept for her dead children until she turned to stone. OP. Wow, this might be the winner. Update 5. Hey guys. I've gotten a few messages about an update, and frankly, you guys have been with me since the start of this whirlwind, 
and have helped me a great deal, so here goes an all over the place update. I can't go into everything because it's draining, so I'll give you guys the highlights, even though this is likely to be long. I've decided to go with Niobe because the namesake is eerily appropriate. Thank you, little Tan Me Too. A month ago, Sil FaceTimed me. She was at Niobe's house helping her clean, and she came across a suitcase. Intrigued, she opened it to find pieces of my clothing, shoes I haven't seen for months, bras, gloves, and a bunch of random SHT, including hair ties and perfume. When asked about it, Niobe said she used to take things of mine, no matter how insignificant. She said she wanted to make things more familiar for Dee Dee when she was here. She asked her about my makeup, but she said she couldn't remember if that was something she took, which is understandable since she was so out of it that day. So the mystery of the missing makeup is still unsolved, but there is a lot of weirdness nonetheless. For the first few weeks, Phil bombarded DH with calls and texts. He never picked up. It turns out he would call DH anytime Niobe was having a hard time convincing us to let her have a FaceTime session with the kids. Our children adapted pretty well after our conversation with DS explaining why they wouldn't be seeing their grandparents. He hadn't really asked or struggled to see Phil or Niobe. Niobe is making steady mental progress. She's not delusional anymore, but she still has her own issues. I would be pretty proud of her if she wasn't causing me so much SHT. Her and her church minions have convinced themselves that my actions are far too drastic and that I'm doing this to be spiteful. I use this opportunity to isolate my husband and my children from their family, but this is all to be expected from someone like me. I think I'm better than them. Literally all the things they have said in the presence of my sill. They also tried to rewrite what happened and have said I exaggerated and manipulated Neob's unfortunate breakdown into creating my own demented narrative. In a matter of weeks, she has managed to take away my son and beloved grandson, as well as my beautiful granddaughter. Every couple weeks, I get calls from people asking me if another rumor is true, including, but not limited to, that I cheated on DH, that I convinced DH to move so he didn't have to live in the same city as my lover and that my leaving had nothing to do with Niobe, but with my own shortcomings that I have tried to project onto Niobe. Please laugh with me. When they found out we were moving as one of her friend's lives near us, they flipped out. The following conversation took place. Niobe. She's taking this too far. I understand I was in the wrong, but to move to another state. Wait, is she planning on leaving for England? She can't do that. Bill. Yeah, I don't think you have a say in that. Niobe. I am still their grandmother. She can't do that. We're not planning to move to the UK any time in the near future if ever. It's just not right for us right now. But either way, she's not seeing my kids, so why would it matter? Fast forward. This B and equally unhinged Phil decided to take a lovely trip to visit London when they were in Europe. Ha ha. We'll go visit the Queen F off, you psychopaths. Thanks to everyone being tight-lipped, we were in Asia on vacation, so she missed us. That didn't stop her from trying to call my sister. Asking for her address to stop by and catch up my sister gave her a stern talking to and pretty much said, I'm not as patient as my sister. Call me again, and we're going to have big problems. We're heading back to the US, so I'm sure our return will invite another level of SHT. Update 6. Hey guys. I know an update about Niobe or my Smil, who thinks my daughter is the child she never got to have as some of you know the saga is way overdue. An update on Crazy is pending, so I'll write that up and post it sometime this week. But this one is a fairly short one, so some of you may remember that during Neob's mental breakdown, she broke into my house, and mysteriously, my makeup disappeared too. But no one ever spoke about it again. Well, a few weeks ago, I was in an old state or home to finalize a few things and attend my good friend's engagement party. Now Neob's mill was good friends with said friend's mother. But after this all kicked off, my friend saw what a mess I was, and her mother was the one who told me Neob was telling people I had an affair and what she claimed was the reason I was moving. Well the friend's mother was disgusted at her lies and cut her off. Niobe however, still felt the need to congratulate my friend on her engagement, and give her a basket of gifts. So I asked my friend what she got. So she went upstairs and grabbed the basket. You guys. Everything in that basket was a brand new version of everything I had owned that Niobe had stolen. The exact foundation that went missing, the bronzer, the lipstick all my shades, which is crazy because my friend is pale, a lingerie set hair ties and perfume. To say we were creeped out is an understatement. I don't know if she did it to F with me or what, but I'd say that's pretty damning evidence. You know what's funny? That is the least crazy these past two months have been, and you guys will soon be roped into the horror movie that is my life soon enough. Relevant comments. Asha Nasasha. So, she's found your replacement. Side story. OP wrote about her mill. 
My mill called me a slot on my birthday for wearing a bikini. Wow, there's a sub for crazy mills. Who would have thought? This is Reddit, after all. I've been reading for the past couple days, and it's crazy how normalized I am to this SHT. I made a throwaway because some of my colleagues know my personal business, and I don't like people I know knowing my business. Mobile, so we apologize for any mistakes. My mill isn't the worst by these standards. She has done her fair share of effed up SHT in the beginning. But I'm a very my word is final don't f with me kind of girl. So she tends to not really bother me directly anymore. She has an array of issues. I have stories for days, so I may post later on. Today I bring you the time she called me a slot on my birthday for wearing a bikini. So it was my birthday, and every year since I was 17, I have gone abroad for it. It's a little tradition since I don't really like parties. Previously, it was with friends, but once I started dating my DH at 21, we started doing it together, later incorporating our kids. My DH's family and my own family, who haven't ever asked, have never been on one of these birthday trips. But for some reason this year, my mill wanted to join us on the trip, saying it would be a great experience and we could catch up and enjoy the good weather. Erg whatever. A little background. My mill is a master manipulator. And yes, my friends suffer from the Jocasta complex. This bee is always in a one-sided competition with me. Note. She literally modifies herself to look like me. It's crazy. DH always knew she was effed up. But when we started dating, and as we got more serious over the years, he truly saw her for what she is, and now always stands by me. But unfortunately, she is his mother. So she's still around. And she has learned it's my way or the highway. So she has railed herself in, because she wants to be a part of our lives. After I told her one time she needs to know, she doesn't benefit my life in any way. She needs us, not the other way, and anyone can get cut off. Digression. Back to the story. I agreed that she could come on the trip. So there were a lot of BEC moments on the actual trip or journey. But that's another story i.e. she implied to the check-in lady that she and my husband were married, and I was the nanny for the kids. So we're on an island. Beaches, hot weather, and almost stress-free, I thought I'm about to enjoy myself. Everyone is already at the beach, but I was having a shower, so I was out a little later than everyone else. Now it's important to note that my mill has always had an obsession with my body. This is all going to sound narcissistic as hell. Forgive me, that isn't my intent at all. No, not in and I want to f you way. More so in and I want that way. She has made several comments on it over the years, and has just been weird about my diet in general. At one point, when we'd go over to eat, she would make separate food for me of just carbs. Like no meat or whatever anyone else was eating a specific menu for me of just pasta, bread and potatoes. She has even tried to take pictures of my arse because she was thinking of getting a BBL and wanted to use my arse as a model because she heard DH say it was perfect once and then asked my DH if it felt good to hold on to. I have an exaggerated hourglass figure for reference. Mill is a larger woman. So I go out to the beach, I see my beautiful babies, I kiss my DH, and I go to unwrap my sarong. Y'all. This woman shrieked. Now it's not like I was butt naked. I was wearing a damn bikini. However, due to my body type, literally everything will emphasize my boobs and arses. Anyway, I had two damn kids, and I have worked hard to keep my waistline. F you Mill, I can wear what I want. She literally screamed. This is a public beach, it was private. And it was only us, and you look like a slug. You can't wear that. I didn't skip a beat, and replied, oh, twirls look. I am wearing the hell out of this. My dad starts laughing and compliments me. He thoroughly enjoys my trolling. She snaps her head to look at him, then closes her gaping mouth, and is thoroughly embarrassed. Like a lot of women, I have had body issues my whole life, and I still have days. It has taken a lot to love myself, and I'll be damned if I let someone try to project their insecurities onto me. You can kiss my arse since you're on it all the time, B. A lot of other Beck happened on this trip. Relevant BG. She's very pale, blonde, and blue-eyed. My husband is half black, so like me, he's of a caramel complexion. Therefore, so are my kids. She complained that I picked a destination where everyone looks like you on purpose, so she could be the odd one out. Yeah, mill shock horror, people in Africa. Are black. I know it's crazy. Update. Follow up and BEC introduction to my mill. Hey guys. The reception to my first post was overwhelmingly supportive, so I just want to thank you guys. I haven't thought about most of these stories for a few years but being on this sub has made me realize how bad she really was or is. So I have stories for days to share with you guys. But today, an intro to any name suggestions. With a Beck edition. My DH loves my mom and calls her mama because, in my culture, this is the nicer way to refer to your mill. The alternative is the equivalent of auntie. 
and it's used for other older people too, but never by their name, which is not a respect thing. Even your friends are supposed to call your mom auntie. Mill found out and tried to make me call her the same. I told her she had a better chance of me calling her shaitan. Devil, but she didn't know what it meant. I feel like my baby will grow up to be closer to her. And that kills me. In reference to raising my own daughter, the F. I thought the women where you're from were from England. Nah, my ethnic background. Close their mouth and only speak when they're spoken to. Surprise, Mill, your racist perception that women who come from a culture outside of the Western world are submissive and weak is wrong. She used to edit her accent to sound more British. She's from Maryland. You guys have no idea how hilarious it was to hear. I cried of laughter when she tried to say Lou in a southern accent. She cried, saying I thought I was better than her. She would always want to hold my baby. Eating. Holding my kid. I put them down for a nap. Pick them up to hold them. My DS, like any newborn, was attached to me. But when she came around to visit, she would follow me around, wanting to hold him, but without using actual words. One day I turned around, and she was directly behind me. And I said E.T., go home and she cried and told everyone I said she looked like E.T. She didn't even get the joke erg. She always refers to my daughter as a pretty princess or perfect angel, and reads her books about how Prince Charming will save her one day. Now I grew up on Disney, so I don't have anything against princesses, but telling my daughter that she is to be dependent on a strange man saving her, and marrying her one day is not how I was raised or how I'm going to raise my daughter. So I played the Cheetah Girls Cinderella on loop. If you go to Google, the lyrics are like the anti-princess song anytime she tried to bring it up. My mill isn't the best cook nice way of saying she doesn't know what seasoning is. Which is whatever. But when I married DH, and we would visit my parents my mom is an amazing cook. And in our cuisine we have a wide range of food with ethnic names duh. So when my DH kept talking about it and using this, and that name of which dishes I should cook, my mill got so mad one day and shouted, those names don't even sound real. You're purposely trying to make me feel bad. It's disgusting. Lady, you have literally made me cook dishes to take to your meetings and pass them off as your own. When I found out I was pregnant with DS, we told all our grandparents, but we told them not to tell anyone else until we said it was okay. Mill sent a group text to everyone she knew an hour later. I was so furious that I told my DH that if we ever have another child, we're not telling her until she either realizes it or until I feel it's okay. He agreed. I didn't tell her until I was nearly six months pregnant with DD. She always freaks out about how I eat. I promise you, I don't eat weird. She projects her weird actual SHT onto me all the time. Eating ice cream. Makes some weird comment about how it's inappropriate to eat in front of my bill. Eating yogurt. Why do you have to lick it first? Just eat like a normal person. Two days after I gave birth, she pointed to my stomach and said, Is another one hiding in there? I just stared at her, and then she said, Mine was gone immediately and started laughing. I pointed at her stomach and said, Are you sure about that? My Phil and Bill were roaring with laughter. Me and my Syl have this running thing where when one of us tells the other some effed up thing she did, we say F off Janet, not her real name and remix of Go Home Roger. So to end this post, F off Janet, thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.